right. Welcome back to Inside Flicks. We're going to be doing our weekly box office report. Uh, Rich, tell us which films made the top five this past weekend. The number one film in America is The Woman King with $19 million. Coming in number two is Barbarian with $6.5 million. Number three is Pearl with $3.1 million. Number four is See How They Run with $3 million. And coming in number five is Bullet Train with $2.5 million. Yes, The Woman King, surprisingly a big number for this weekend. I, I thought it was going to make it around 12 to 10, but actually it, it did better than expected. It's a welcome a welcome number for what has been a, a slow September already. It still is slow. I mean, the, the third and fourth and fifth um, picture the uh, on the top five is still three million, you know. The Woman King is the uh, the outstanding uh, picture for sure, but I don't know if that's uh, going to sustain uh, every week from now on until um, Halloween and all that. Yeah, I, I think it will because there's really not much competition, and uh, I'm expecting the Woman King to um, to have a, a, a small small drop next week. What really disappoints me in seeing the top five is um, how poor Pearl did. I mean, it made about a million less than um, X did on its opening weekend, and um, X's numbers were, you know, kind of kind of disappointing for for that movie. So seeing that Pearl, you know, did even less. I mean, and they already have a sequel, you know, planned for this movie. Pearl is just one of those movies that um, uh, doesn't cost that much, and it's a horror genre. To do only one one million dollar less than an X, I think that's okay with them. I mean, uh, they, I mean it's it, in a lot of theaters. It's in a yeah, lot of that's, theaters, that's, and that theater, aver- that theater average is really small. That's true. <laughs> Smaller than uh, See How They Run. Mm. And Pearl, it seems like they spent a lot more on Pearl's marketing, because I saw, I saw ads for Pearl everywhere. Yeah, that's true. They did spend a lot on uh, advertising. The, but this 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 film should have been uh, um, more of a, a limited release at first, just like X was, right? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I don't remember if that's how they released X, but they definitely should have done a more limited release of Pearl. Uh, try to build up some buzz for the movie. Um, yeah. I mean, he got some really great reviews. Martin Scorsese raved about it. He was a, really? a, he was a big fan of Pearl. Cool. Uh, but I think Barbarians was the one that kind of eat into the to the audience because uh, they had a oh, Barbar- yeah, Barbarian a had a strong no. second week. Yeah, and only dropped uh, less than third uh, less than forty percent. So. Uh, that's a great word of mouth, and it's, and it's uh, was six point five million dollars for the second week. That's pretty good. Let me ask you this: Do you think the, the controversy surrounding the Woman King did that help the box office? I don't think it affected it at all. You know what I mean? Because I think the people that are you know really kind of making a big deal about it weren't going to see it anyways. Mm-hmm. I, I think it actually helped the box office. I think nowadays uh, there's no such thing as bad press. I think the the controversy about how the the historical inaccuracies of the film or lack of, or or whatever. I'm just saying that there was a buzz this weekend on Twitter, and I think that helped at least put the word out that the movie was out in theaters. Oh, that's yeah, a good point, because I didn't, I, I almost kind of forgot the movie was even coming out, but all the controversy made me so just aware of the movie's release. Yeah. Yeah, and if there's no such thing as bad press, then uh, we'll, we'll certainly see it in uh, next week's uh, box office with Don't Worry Darling. Well, let's take a look at the rest of the top 10 because uh, the number right. 10 uh, is uh, pretty impressive. Well, for the first time, Top Gun Maverick is off the top five for uh, uh, w- and coming in number six. Uh, number seven is DC League of Super Pets. Number eight is The Invitation. Number nine is Minions, The Rise of Gru. And coming in number 10 is Moon Age Daydream. Yeah, Moon Age Daydream is the, the David Bowie pick, and it was like the best per screen average, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I'm very impressed. It's over seven thousand dollars or seven thousand dollars per screen, and it was only and playing in IMAX screen, so it only was uh, at 170 uh, theaters. But still, uh, very, very impressive, and especially in comparison to the movie that came in at number 19, Confessed Fletch, <laughs> uh, yeah. 516 dollars from uh, 516 screens. Uh, one of the the worst uh, of the week, <laughs> or one of the worst of the year, probably. <laughs> Yeah, from a big studio, Paramount Pictures, yeah. Yeah, with a big star. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Moon Age Daydream uh, definitely uh, has sparked a lot of David Bowie fans, and uh, it's going to be expanding this week in more theaters, so I'm, I'm assuming that number's just going to grow. Probably, yeah, I would imagine. And it seems like it probably took a, a lot out of um, Brahmasta's... Um, IMAX uh, screens? Yeah, I imagine so, because that had a 75% drop from last week. Yeah. I imagine Moon Age Daydream had a, had something to do with that. 
just my guess. So, All right, let's look ahead at next week. What are some of the movies coming out in wide release, Rich? Well, the biggest movie is probably going to be uh, Don't Worry Darling and Avatar re-release. Yeah, I think Don't Don't Worry Darling is going to probably do really, really well. But I'm I'm curious, like, uh, I, I think it's definitely going to make, you know, double, you know, double digits. And it's not going to be like a single digit um, weekend for that film. But I'm I don't I'm not sure if it's going to make as much as like the women, the woman king made this weekend. Uh, what, what are you guys saying? Where do you where do you think the opening weekend will be for Don't Worry, Darling? And do you think the opening weekend for Avatar is going to actually like, do you think Avatar will pop in, in the top five? Because I think there's there's a chance, right? I oh, think yeah. I want to re-experience that film in 3D. I think it's going to do a lot better than the, the re-release of Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, really? So Yeah, that's because it's been a long time since Avatar came out in theaters. It's been over 10 years. It's been like almost 15 years, I, I, right, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible. Well, I, I think uh, Don't Worry Darling has a, 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 a great ga- a cast attached to it. So um, with uh, fans for uh, Harry Styles and, uh, and uh, Miss Flo. <laughs> um so yeah um i wouldn't be surprised if, if, if it reaches number one or it might just be close it might be it might just be really close with avatar i do see oh, do you, Ava- think, so you, you think avatar is going to be either number one or number two i i think it's going to uh dominate with the imax screens for sure wow and, right. and 3d and this might be the revamp of 3d and uh, i think that um i think they should have uh uh, announced a, a sneak peek at Avatar Two with the with the release, but that would be smart, I, right? I, I, I was totally surprised that they didn't. Well, I think that the controversy surrounding the "Don't Worry, Darling," which is all this kind of behind the scenes kind of uh, antics, I think, and it, relationship uh, stuff, and relationship stuff, only helped the, the kind of the, the awareness of "Don't Don't Worry, Darling." So, uh, I think yep. I think uh, because a lot of people were, have been talking about Olivia Wilde and her her relationship with uh, Miss Flo. <laughs> Ultimately, I think it's going to help the movie. And I think uh, the it's going to be number one. I, I don't know how much it's going to make. I would say fifteen million, but I don't think uh, the the Woman King is going to drop that much. I think I think there's good I think there's good word of mouth, and I think critics really love it, and it seems like audiences really love that. So, uh, Avatar's I'm I'm looking at Avatar's like uh, breaking the top five, but not really breaking. I, mean, I can see it becoming number three. Yeah, I can see it number three also. I could see it like. Um... And probably barbarian at number four, but I, I just I know I, I think the woman keen and uh, don't worry, darling are going to probably more than likely be number one and number two. Yeah, I agree. Right, and I don't even see Pearl making a top five again. Or Unfortunately, see how, no. See how, no, see how they run. Definitely. Well, something has to, something has to come in at number five. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, what is some of the other movies coming out in limited release? Well, the first movie is probably Bandit with Mel Gibson. And also opening up a uh, limited release is Catherine called Birdie and the Infernal Machine with Guy Pierce and the Enforcer with Antonio Banderas. Uh, yeah, so I think Catherine called Birdie uh, is an Amazon Prime original. It's uh, coming out in limited release. That'll be available on Amazon Prime in October. But th- I think there was another movie that was coming out in field D for the first time. Which movie was that, Rich? Oh, uh, the uh, Star Wars based film Five Twenty Five Seventy Seven, which was a film that came out years ago, but now it's finally uh, coming out in VOD. I think uh, stars John Francis Daly when he was a young, a young man from Freaks and Geeks, uh, but now he's um, he's now known as a writer director. Uh, yeah, so this was a coming of age film about kids going to the Star Wars premiere. It had a th- small theatrical release years ago, but now it's getting a a wide VOD release. Uh, uh, Rich, let's talk about some of the movies that come out on streaming. Uh, arriving in uh, Peacock early um, on uh, September 21st is the new film Meet Cute. And then also available on September 23, Sydney. That's a Sydney Poitier documentary produced by Oprah Winfrey. Also available on Netflix this week, uh, Jazzman's Blues. That's a Tyler Perry drama. Lou, that's the uh, a new action flick starring Allison Janney. And also uh, On the Come Up, which is uh, uh, Sanaa Lathan's directorial debut. And that's going to be on Paramount+. Plus. Okay. All right. That's it for this video of Inside Flicks. We'll be back next week with some box office results. And, and also we'll talk about some of the movies that are coming out next week. Thank you for watching Inside Flicks.